Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore Principal Components Analysis, or PCA, by exploring the covariance matrix of data. So let's suppose that we have this fictional data. Each row corresponds to an observation, which is how a student performed on the tests, and each column is a test. Observe that we don't have any other information about this. We don't know the maximum, we don't know the minimum, and we don't know anything else about these tests, such as their rated difficulty, whether rated by the instructor or by the student. All we have are these grades. So the first thing that we do in principal components analysis is we make the data zero mean. So that means, that implies that we need to calculate the means. And so the means, and I like to put an underscore when something's a row, the means of these will be, um, this will, the first one will be 28.4, uh, the second one will be 23, and the third one will be 27.6. And when I know the means, then I can simply subtra subtract the means. So the means would be 30 minus 28.4 is 1.6, 20 minus 28.4 is minus 8.4, and so on. And I can then calculate the matrix that is the zero mean matrix. So for a zero mean matrix M, the covariance of the original data actually, but uh, we'll, we'll write the covariance matrix. So that will be one over, we take the number of rows minus one to uh, calculate the sample covariance, and then that scalar is multiplied by M transpose M, and that gives us the covariance. So in our example, the covariance matrix is approximately, so to just one decimal point, um, it'll be 25.3, 19.4, 17.6, Three. And then the those are the variances, so that's how each one varies. So what that says is this doesn't vary very much from itself. So test two tended to have more consistent scores, and then tests one and three, there was a higher variance, meaning that there was a greater spread from the mean on those tests. And then how test one varied from test two, that was 17.5, and how test one varied from test three was 27.5, so that was a little higher. That's, that's interesting that the, the covariance of test 1 and test 3 were greater than the variance. Well, that happens. And then the way that test 2 varied from test 3 was 25.5 approximately. And knowing those, it, this is a symmetric matrix, so that means I simply copy the values over and I now have a covariance matrix. And I can then find, so this covariance matrix, I'm reading out some information, but we'll get much more if we use the decomposition. So this has to be, this matrix has to be symmetric and it has to be positive semi-definite. So that means that it has to have a spectral decomposition. And I can write that spectral decomposition as that will be the eigenvalue, the eigenvector um, basis times the eigenvalue diagonal, and then the transpose of the eigenvector basis. So this, every symmetric matrix has an eigen decomposition, and this one has a symmetric positive definite, meaning that each one of those eigenvalues is greater than or equal to zero. When we have that information, these are the definitions. So let's call these observations and the definitions you can find in many, many resources. So the principal components are The principal components are 
eigen these are the eigenvectors eigenvectors of this symmetric positive definite uh, symmetric positive semi-definite covariance and the latent variables these are the eigenvalues values of the covariance matrix and those from the eigen decomposition those are the diagonal diagonal entries of the eigenvalue matrix the the principal components tell us the main ways that the variables are related and the latent variables tell us how much each one of those components contribute to the covariance so those are two of the key concepts the third one and this is the one that we're going to use in a subsequent session um, in greater detail the scores these are the product product of the zero mean data so in our terminology that's the data in the matrix M products of zero mean matrix M with principal components so if we had only one score that score would be with would be the product of this zero mean matrix M and I'll put parenthesis S because we don't know whether you need one or whether you need more and this is the idea behind principal components analysis is we look at the covariance matrix of the data and that tells us a certain amount but the eigen decomposition tells us much much more because the dominant eigenvalue is the main way that the matrix varies and if you go back to the session where we represent a matrix as a sum you'll see that the first eigenvector which is associated with the largest eigenvalue is the best um, the best rank one approximation to the covariance matrix and that means that it's the best one dimensional approximation to the column space of M and if it's a one-dimensional approximation to the column space of M, then that's closely related to a one-dimensional approximation of the column space of the original data.